I think we came through okay. A couple of nicks here and there, but nothing serious. Yeah, I think overall this team has been pretty healthy first first half of the season. That was one of our goals going into offseason, you know, to do some things differently in our offseason program and our training room. And, and I think the guys have done a pretty good job with that. Oh, no doubt about it. When you look at the stats this time of season, uh, this time of year and last year, it is it's, it's better. In your mind, who are the guys that can benefit most from getting a week to kind of rest? Physically? All these guys. I mean, these guys have been working hard. I mean, I gave them the whole week off because you know, this first half of the season, these guys are playing a lot of close games. Our backs have been against the wall so many times. They fought back. You know, uh, I just feel like getting away from football, being with your family, uh, something they need to do this week while us coaches try to figure some things out. When you looked at uh, the film, uh, did anything jump out to you that you didn't notice on Sunday? Uh, the only thing that really jumped out to me that I wasn't quite sure of on Sunday was that was not a damn pick play. I can tell you that. You know, I thought our guys did a nice job of getting out of the way and uh, causing those two to collide. But, you know, referee made the call of what he thought he saw and, yeah, it's a bad call, but you know they're human beings too. You know you're sending those plays, you know, every week, and you get uh, something back on Thursday saying what was correct, what was not correct, and you know it doesn't do you any good. But uh, they, they they will respond. Uh, where's Denzel at, um, and what's your expectation for him? Denzel should be ready to go for the Jacksonville game, but uh, you know he's got to get out and practice more full speed. Yeah, uh, and I don't see any reason why he wouldn't be ready to go. Would you kind of pencil him in as the starter and the linebacker when he comes back? Is that sort of well, we'll see. You know, we get him back in the building on Monday, and we go from there in regular practice. And Denzel's been practicing for the last couple of weeks anyway, so I got a pretty good idea of where he's at. But uh, I think it's safe to say that he can step right back in and start. Anthony, you mentioned the stuff that you did during the off season in terms of you know, creating a healthier team. What did you do during the regular season to, to continue that? You know, we have guys doing uh, different type of cardio, uh, getting them off the, gr- uh, off the grass in the training room, uh, getting their heart rates up so that they can stay in shape and maintain that stamina. Uh, we're doing some things differently. We brought in uh, recovery days. You know, guys have recovery days. We brought in flexibility coaches, uh, injury prevention type coaches. So we- we- we've made a- an effort, you know, to-, to get better in soft tissue injuries and just keeping guys off IR. Last year. I know you weren't here last year. You know, uh, no, I don't know what they did last year, but for me, you know, we get to hit one time a week, and after a team run period, then we take the pads off. So I would say we are practicing more without pads because once you learn how to practice without the pads, I think it's beneficial. Coach, you mentioned that the players are all, the coaches are all here. What kind of things are you looking at? More reflecting back or looking forward? What do you guys do? Both. You know, we're reflecting back, doing some self scout, uh, guys doing projects like crazy right now, just trying to figure out. How uh, different ways that we can get better, and and when the guys get back, you know how we want to move forward, going from here. So fair to say, kind of one of the big questions that you would ask about this team through is why you guys haven't scored more points, just considering. Well, as Phil kind of mentioned that, that that's the thing that kind of gnaws at him is that he looks at these games and feels like we should be scoring more, and we're not. Do you have a reason for that at this point? Well, you know, and that's some of the things that we're looking at, but. I, I'm a matchup guy, and I believe we need to get the ball in the hands of our playmakers, and we're looking at different ways to do that, and the right person, getting the right personnel groups on the field uh, to score points, maybe taking more opportunities down the field, you know, off of run action. So uh, we're looking at all of that right now. How would you kind of assess, I mean, this is your first day of meets, you know, running your own program. How would you assess yourself? How would you, what areas do you need to get better at? What do you think you've done well? Well, I think we all, you know, I think we all can get better. And, and we're always improving. You know, I tell the guys all the time, you've never got it. And when you think you've got it, that's when you're screwed up. So, uh, yeah, I, I can improve in the process of uh, the efficiency of this football team, uh, as well as my assistant coaches and every player. Not really, you know. Uh, I was prepared for this you know, when I took the job, so there's nothing that surprised me. But going through it for the first time, it's different. It's different than hearing about it, preparing for it, uh, when you're actually going through it. Is it tougher because of the way this team's done well, but also lost a bunch of close games? I mean, does that, make it, does that amp up the, the intensity of, of the wins and losses and everything? Is it, is it tough? 
It's tough because you've been in every single game, and you think about what could have been, and but you can't do that. You know, our record is what it is. We're three and five, and we got the second half of our season to look at going into the third quarter, and you know we got to figure out a way to win that third, third and fourth quarter. I thought Dan played well, you know, for his first start. Now he can he can improve. There are some things he can do better, but overall, I thought he played well. We're happy with the group we have, but you know, if someone uh, you know put a deal on the table that you know maybe too good to pass up, we got to look at it. Coach, when you look at the schedule, that, right? are you hoping the bye comes at a time like this, right? or is it not matter to you? You know, I think it's ideal right in the middle of the season, so I think it's perfect timing for us. But uh, it really doesn't matter. You made the thought process on giving the players an entire week off and not practicing a day or two, just wanting them to get away. I just want them to get away and just recharge. You know, it's something that uh, uh, Mike Holmgren used to do it with his team, with the Packers, and he had one of the best bye week records uh, in, in the league at the time. And, and I thought about that, and, and I just thought about the season we've had so far. It's been a grind. So I want the guys just to get away. And I need some time just to spend with the coaches, with the players out of the building as well. You know, I think the guys that are supposed to step up, those guys, you know, Melvin Ingram, Joey, those guys have done that. You know, but guys like uh, uh, Adrian Phillips, you know, he, he's, he's stepped up and done an outstanding job for us, you know, on defense. And then on offense, you know, you look at uh, Tyrell that's been pretty solid at times for us. So, Kenny Wiggins, let's throw him in that group too. Well, he's a good player. You know, he's very dynamic, as you just said. But he's a good player. I don't, I don't pay attention too much to stats this time of year. But you know, I just, I got a good player, and I'm glad he's on my team. <laughs> okay. Coach, are you surprised that? <laughs> Um, I think Hunter was only on the field for forty um, percent of the plays for Phil Pass yesterday. His kind of involvement, but we talked about this, has been very up and down kind of throughout the season. Um, where are you guys at in terms of his usage? If you want, would you like to see him even more involved? In the no offense? doubt, no doubt. You know, but uh, sometimes the defense, you know, they they know Hunter's a really good tight end. And they can do things to try to take Hunter away, and we got to capitalize on that with other players, which we have done that. But uh, Hunter's doing an outstanding job in a run game as well as a pass game. You know, his blocking has been really good this year. So uh, I think he's been on the field enough to help us. Sorry, this is kind of a minutiae question, but you mentioned the way that you guys practice without pads. I think he described that slide and glide when I asked earlier this year. Is that how you described it? Well, you know, we have to. Well, we have three tempos, you know, and it, we use these tempos when I was playing with the 49ers, with Bill Walsh, with Mike Shanahan in Denver, full speed, you know, and then it's slide and glide, and then it's jog through. And when you can learn to practice at those three tempos, I think you can take some pressure off your team and you can help them get to the game fresher, you know, and, and not beat up all the time. So when you practice slide and glide, is that without pads? That's without pads. But you can also do it with pads on. It's just not as physical. Pads off, then you'll go to that kind of tempo. Then once they take the pads off, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Yep. Uh, I was going to ask you about Philly before I interrupt you, but I didn't have time to. Uh, <laughs> is it is it rare to have a guy playing at the level he's playing this soon out of college, coming out of Ohio State, and just to be that polished? Well, I would say it's rare because you know you look around the league and you got the Von Millers who did it, Khalil Max who, who's done it, right. and still doing it. I mean. Uh, so it's not rare, but I'm glad we have one, you know, that we drafted that high that's playing at an elite level. Absolutely. And then obviously Joey can get out for the passer, but I think you've kind of talked about it, his ability to defend the run and be a complete player. Does, does that make him a little different than maybe others? You know, 
Joey's very unselfish as well as Melvin. And both of those guys know that, you know, in this day and age, all people talk about is sacks, and that's what they get the commercials for in the Pro Bowls, sacks, not tackles. But those guys understand we have to do a better job of stopping the run. And they've been playing different techniques, run techniques, to help us stop the run and, and not pass techniques. So uh, very unselfish on their part, and I appreciate those guys for that. But they're both complete defensive ends. It really could because Denzel was becoming a leader on our defensive side of the ball. And I'm convinced that if he hadn't have gotten hurt, he probably would have been a team captain. So getting him back second half of the season, I think that's going to be big. How did Schofield look yesterday? Schofield held his own, you know, but he can play better as well. You know, him and Feeney both, they held their own. You guys looked pretty good yesterday. First and second down, what, what, what kind of happened on third down? Especially in, like, the third short passing game. Yeah, you know, we, we third and two, we, we're off the field too many times. Third and six, we're off the field. We have to do better extending those drives, you know, to keep to give our defense a blow. Are you going to take a closer look at punt return and kick return? I mean, obviously, Travis had a big game for you a couple weeks right. ago and made the mistake last week. Yeah, you know, that position has been so inconsistent, but, you know, you only have so many guys on the roster right now that can do it. Travis is very dynamic. Uh, you know, he was challenged last week. I love how he stepped up, ran down the middle of the field and scored on that touchdown. He's got to do that more often. You know, what he did yesterday was, and he know, it was a bad decision, a complete lack of awareness, and it was a big play in the game. You give yourself a little break during, during Coaches get no break. I'm sorry. Good afternoon. Well, early in the week, it's going okay. Uneven. Uneven would be a good a good way to say we've had our moments, but certainly not as consistent as we had thought or hoped that we would probably be. How much is that just kind of melding your philosophy with a new head coach and, and what he wants to do? Uh, you know, I think that's part of it. I mean, I think that we we had uh, certainly a way of operating that was a little bit different from from the way Coach Lynn has wanted it, and. That's okay. I mean, you know, he has a vision, and I certainly respect his vision, and we're trying to do that. We're trying to get to that point. So, uh, and I think it's not necessarily just me or us. It's just it's our team, and we've got a lot of new faces as well. So I know we've got some players that are really good players that have been here, but we also have a lot of new faces, and we're playing a lot of young guys now, especially up front. So I think that uh, just even some of the terminology that, uh, has, is a little bit different. Some of our schemes are a little bit different. Some of that is um, maybe part of it. You know, I, I certainly don't want to try to make an excuse, but there have been times when we've performed pretty well. I think, to me, it seems like over the last couple of weeks we've started to get a little bit better. I think especially late in the games with some of those extended drives, you know, 90-plus-yard 90 yard, 90 yard drives to score uh, have been good for us. You know, we just need to put it together a little bit better in the early parts of games, which it seems like we've, we've done that a little bit against Denver. The first drive we went down, we didn't get in. And then against against New England, I think we had 11 plays starting out, and you know, and we kind of shot ourselves in the foot. So th that to me is what we've got to do more than anything else is the mistakes. We've got to eliminate the mistakes. What, what's held you guys back on third Well, you know, we we've had – I think just that was part of a one of the things that we've done this week or we're doing this week is looking back on some of those situational things that we have to get better at. And just for an example, third and ones, we've had eight of them and we missed on four of them. You can't do that. You know, that, that third and ones, you got to be 100% or at least seven out of eight of them. And four of them were two were false starts one, and two of them were missed assignments. And those are things that are within our control, you know, and, and in an area that that's critical. You know, you expect to have greater success. And then we haven't had as many third and two to three or third and four to sixes. 
and we haven't been as good in those as we should have been. And those have been, for instance, in one of the down and distances, four to six, we've had three drops and three penalties. And if you say, if we'd been successful on those six plays, now all of a sudden we're operating at over 50%, which is a good number. I mean, that's coach spin. You can do that on anything. But the one thing, the one thing that I will say is we've had a lot of seven to tens, but we're over 40-something percent. We're almost 50% on those. And that's unheard of in that down and distance. So, you know, there are some things that we're doing well. We're just putting ourselves in a position that, we can't, you know, you, you can't make a living converting third and seven to tens or third. We've had two third and 13 pluses or third and 12 pluses in every game, and that's, that's hard. You know, penalties, mistakes, you know, those are the things you can't do. So those are the things we have to clean up. And once again, you go back and you look at it and you say, is it scheme? Is it how do you prepare? How do you do differently? You know, for us, a lot of it has got to be correcting our own mistakes. Just like yesterday, we had opportunities in that game we made some plays. We did some good things. We ran the ball a little bit better. But we had some opportunities for plays. Tyrell steps on the out-of-bounds line on a play that would have been a touchdown. You know, we had a penalty on a, on a play that was another touchdown. And, and if, you, if you correct the mistakes on those and, and we take those two touchdowns, it's a different game, you know? So I know we didn't win, and that's like everybody has those kind of things to say. But, you know, it does feel like we are improving a little bit. Well, I think part of the part of the way of correcting it is identifying it. You know, I mean, I think you got to make sure you you point that out. I mean, you do that on a weekly basis, but I think when you when you get a break, I mean, it's it's hard when you come off of a game and you got to prepare for another game. You're so focused on doing that that sometimes you correct that mistake, but you don't keep track of the totality. If that's the right word of that whole thing. You know, you don't say, "Oh my gosh, on third and ones, we've missed four out of eight. That's that's unacceptable." So, you know, I say you got to make it a point to say, guys, we have to be better in those areas, and this is how we're going to do it. It's not, you know, it's not we're going to change the scheme. It's going to be more attentive to the details of that. Is that what the benefits of having a buy now is that you have a large enough sample size to try to early on to identify the things that, you know, this is what we're good at, this is what we need to improve the program, and then push early in the year, you still don't know yourself that much? Yeah, I mean, I think, that it, I think that's a good point, Ricky. I mean, if you look at it from a standpoint of training camp, you know, training camp, we're – we're running the things that we've run before. We're kind of mixing, melding everything. And, you know, we haven't really game planned or, or prepared for an opponent like you do in season. And, you know, it was going into the first game against Denver, who was, who was a very good defense. There was a lot of things we had to learn from. And I think we've kind of done a better job of putting that together. But now is the time where we really get a chance to look at it and say, okay, this is where we've got to get better and start focusing on working. Not that we don't do that every week, but – you know, it's just hard with uh, when you're on such a schedule of having to pre- – there's so much stuff you have to prepare for that it's good to get this chance to look at it. I know 235 is maybe a harder question to answer, but what have you liked about what the offense has done? Has, has anybody in particular stood out to you as exceeding expectations or, or playing better? Or is, has there been, what have the bright spots done to you? Well, time? you know, it's easy for me to say right now Keenan Allen has been – because we lost Keenan in the first game last year. And, uh, you know, he, he really makes a difference for you from some of the things that he does. Uh, we, we've got a lot of different guys that are contributing, young guys that are doing some things. But, you know, it's hard for me when we haven't been as effective offensively as you'd like to be to say, okay, I'm, we're pleased with, with what's going on. I think our guys are fighting. I think we have some resilience in our guys. You know, to me, what we did in Oakland going down and, and taking the ball – holding it to the end and kicking the field goal, that's big. And then the next week against Denver in the fourth quarter, having a 90-plus um, yard drive for a touchdown in the fourth quarter. And even yesterday, even though I know it sounds stupid, but with a minute left, we took the ball down the field with no timeouts and did have a throw to the end zone, which, you know, it's not easy to do. It's not easy to go however many yards that was. So I think we've been better at the end of the halves and at the end of the games with some of our operations, which is something last year that we weren't as good at. But, you know, as far as individual players, um, you know, I, I think we've had flashes from everybody, but consistency as a whole, I think that's something that we've got to get continue to get better at. This has been three weeks of Mike Williams. What have you seen from him? It seems like one of the things that he's been asked to do a lot of is a pretty good job of run blocking. Um, but what else have you seen from him? 
Well, you know, it's, it's, it's easy, or it's, it's when you see him block because that's what you notice. You don't notice that he's in there running routes and when he doesn't do something. But Mike's learning. Once again, I've been asked this question a lot, and, and you know, justifiably so. He's a, he's a good young player. You've got to remember now, he, he uh, missed everything. He hasn't done anything, and he's got a week of practice, two weeks of practice under his belt and two games under his belt, and he's making strides. But there's a lot of things. I mean, there's no way that you can learn the technique of press coverage or, or how you have to get inside a defender and how you break out of a route down the field without doing it. I mean, it's just like anything. That's all a part of it, and Mike's learning. And it's, a, it's really easy to stand behind, stand behind the huddle, stand behind the line, and have the play and know what the play is and look at it and say, okay, I should do that. It's a big difference between when you're sitting there and the guy's right in front of you and you're trying to decide, oh, my gosh, what do I have? What's my adjustment? Who do I block? You know, those are all things that you have to go through as a young player. And Mike's doing a good job with that. He's just, you know, he, you know that because he was such a good player in college. But it's a big jump to this league, and he's coming on. Is he a good week-to-week -week learner? I mean, you mentioned that. It seems like you're going to learn quickly from your Indian experiences. For him, at least, seems like that's the, the most crucial thing. You know what? It sure seems that way. It seems that way. It seems that way on the practice field. You see him learn some things on the practice field, and that's where you wish that, you know, all those OTAs and training camp practices, even preseason games, you get a chance to learn that. But I give him credit. You know, there's things that he does that, like the first in he caught against Oakland. He came across the field and caught it, and you thought, wow, okay, he flashed that way. And, you know, we've tried to do a couple of things to get him the ball, and it just it hasn't worked out. But um, he is growing and getting better. You know, the biggest thing for him now, one of the things I've been most impressed is if you've watched, he's played a number of different positions. It's not just line up at the X. He was in the slot a couple of times in the game. He was the single receiver side. Once or twice, he was as the X a couple of times. That's not easy. Each one of those positions has its own different techniques that you have to be prepared for or their own different responsibilities you have to do. And that's a lot for a young guy. And, you know, to hit, it's, it's, our guys are great because they help him out on the field all the time. But there's no substitute for getting those, that experience. And he's getting better. He'll get more opportunities as we go forward just because um, he's got that ability to make some plays. Philip has embraced uh, Coach Lynn's philosophy of being efficient, taking care of football, and, and, and just kind of managing the game um, versus maybe what he was asked to do in the past. I think Phillip's a competitor, and he wants to win, and he'll do anything that he can to help this team win. <clears throat> help this team win. Uh, you know, it was unfortunate that the last play yesterday was an interception because he gets credit for an interception when really you have to throw that to the end zone, and you know if. The timing was just a little bit off. The guy was supposed to come in from the left side to catch it, and we didn't quite get there. But um, I think he's done a good job. He made some plays in the game yesterday, the one throw to Tyrell that was across the field. He had pressure right in his face, and he threw it 10 yards before Tyrell got to the spot, the one that he, you thought he caught on his helmet, and, he, and it ended up coming out. It's an incredible throw. So he still does some of those things that are really special. And, uh, you know, I think hopefully over the latter part of the season or for the next eight weeks we'll – our efficiency will get better, and we'll all be happy. How tough is that for a quarterback that's played in the league and had a lot of success doing it one way to try to start doing it a different way when the way you've done it has been pretty successful? Yeah, I mean, I, well, I think, you know, the three weeks before yesterday, it was all great because we were winning. You know, anytime you you play a game like yesterday and you have a chance and you, you know you feel like you could have won it, it's always tough. But... Once again, Philip is to me is the ultimate team player. He he wants to do it the way the coach wants it done. You know, whether whoever the coach is, in this case Coach Lynn, what his philosophy is, he wants to do it the way that Coach Lynn wants it done. It'll give us success, and and he's working hard at that. Like you know, it's it's not always the case with some veteran quarterbacks in this league, but you know, I think it's a speaks a lot about Philip's character and certainly his leadership and character. So if you're in a huge position, you were here before. What have you liked about the way they've kind of attacked uh, health and, and keeping guys on the field? And, and what are the big changes that you've noticed in the way that the staff has gone out keeping guys on the field? We haven't had as many guys miss games. I mean, we've had a little issue with the offensive line here the last couple of weeks. And um, I give credit to those guys that have come in and played. You know, Feeney did a good job for us yesterday as a young player. And, 
Schofield certainly has done a good job for us a couple of times. But overall, um, it's been good that we've had the same guys out there, which you know, can help you. I think it's an important part of us. I mean, where we are, we're three and five, like you said. We've got a chance if we can, if we can play over the next eight weeks like we've done the last four weeks, we give ourselves a chance. And a lot of that is because of the way our guys have been working and preparing. And if you have those same guys, then you have a chance because you're building off of what you're learning each week and what you're trying to get done. And, you know, it, it, I, going into New England yet, yesterday and playing against those guys, you get a, a real sense of what it's like for a group to be together for a long time. You know, the way that, I mean, they have a specific way that they want to play the game and they do it very well. And, uh, you know, that's, that's all part of it. And that's what Coach Lynn's trying to get done here. And, you know, it is a process, but to me, to start off 0-4 and then win your next three and have a chance to win that game yesterday speaks a lot about the direction that we're going. You probably seen it. you've seen it, Ricky. You just don't remember it. We did it. We've done it before. But um, you know what? You've got some guys that can do that, and and I think it's always good to try to keep defenses on their toes. And Coach Lynn has a good background with that. And you know, it's fun. It's fun to do those things if they work. Good. You got it, guys. week you can spend more time as a coaching staff kind of going through and analyzing everything but uh, you know a very very explosive offense very good offense that we just faced um, give a lot of credit to their staff and their players uh, obviously their quarterback makes them run and uh, did a good job you know they threw it over what 47 times in the game uh, we went in with a distinct philosophy throughout the game and I thought that we did a pretty good job making adjustments um, we had some things go our way as well uh, the whole thing was obviously they're a high scoring offense was to try to limit some of the scoring and keep it um, you know where it's in within range for our offense and for our team and uh, we did at times but uh, you know we gave up some big plays that they were a team that averaged over 10 explosive plays a game so going into it, we knew we had to try to limit. I think in our scale, plus 12 and plus 16, I think they had six. So that part of it I thought was pretty good. But there are some other things that we need to need to take a look at and just you know go further. You guys uh, are going to probably get Denzel back here um, for the second half of the season. What does he add to your defense? What do you see his role being? Right. <laughs> Well, I, it's going to be great to have him back. Just his energy level and what he brings to the defense, very well respected. I think, you know, a lot of the players, when they saw him starting to practice, you know, and get in some reps, they were excited about that. So I think with the linebacker situation, we anticipate him starting, you know, coming in and, and doing that. But, uh, you know, just the rotations. Now we're trying to move some guys in and out, and hopefully, you know, within the next week or so, see him practice and kind of solidify that part of it. Yeah, you know what, uh, just start part of our self-study, you know, the first five games were brutal. <laughs> I mean, we weren't very good versus the run at all. Uh, teams were averaging over 5.1 yards per carry, and, you know, the Philly game was over 200 yards, and the Giant game, 160. And, uh, you know, the last three games, I think it's been much better. It's, you know, closer to that, just under four range, the last three games. So that part has been better. Our fits are cleaner. Uh, our tackling has become better in close quarter spaces. Um, so, and that's what Denzel's strength is, too. So he's just got a little bit more, you know, size to him. Yeah, you know what, I, I, I did. I kind of felt that the last couple of weeks, just with our fits and the guys playing faster, I felt like the Denver game, we really played fast. And, uh, you know, and then it showed up in practice, too. I think guys are starting to understand some of the issues. The issues we face in our defense show up week to week. You know, that's how teams try to attack you. So once they understand the issues and how they have to play them and adjust to them, you know, you see a team that plays faster. Well, right now we're spending a lot of our time just self-scouting us, you know, looking at everything. Um, there's six areas that we talk about, stopping the run, eliminating explosives, affecting the quarterback, winning on third down, owning the red zone, and then it's all about the ball, you know, our takeaways. 
And so those six areas will really break down and analyze to see, you know, which defenses are doing better than others and what's the issues that we got to get corrected. Just that is news. Um, I know it's hard when you're three and five and sit back and say, these things have gone so well or these things have what have, you, have there been individual guys that have exceeded expectations for you on defense? The guys yeah. that stood out, um, who are some of those guys? Where are the areas that Well, I, I mean, I think a lot of these guys, uh, you know, I, I was really impressed yesterday. Sometimes when you're struggling a little bit, it's not going quite your way. Uh, sometimes there's guys you can see frustration on the sideline. I just haven't seen any with our guys. I mean, I see a let's get back out there and get this right, but it, not where it carries over. You don't have to address the guys like that. So it's really a good group, really good group that way. In the secondary, you know, you point out a couple, you fail to mention others. You, you know, you think about it, you go, I should have said him. But a guy like T. Will, I think, has really done a nice job at corner. He's come in just, you know, there's always stories that take place uh, through the season. I think he's one of them uh, back there. I think AP, uh, Adrian Phillips has done a really nice job. We tried it. We got him. He's playing linebacker really for us in quite a few situations. And we did it when they had 12 personnel in the game. We had him in there. So, and for the run numbers to go down when you put another defensive back in there, uh, that's usually not how it works, but he's that type of person. So I think in the secondary, those two guys really jump out. At the linebacker spot, I think Hayes. Hayes has really come in and done a nice job. Uh, you know, I think for him, you know, he's in on those running situations, and he's really not maybe your atypical um, nickel linebacker, Mike linebacker, but he plays a lot for us in those situations other than third down. And I think he's really done a good job. Up front, you know, Phylon, I think he's, you know, obviously Joey and Melvin uh, are guys that are getting a lot of heat on the quarterback. But just the way he's playing inside, you know, along with Brandon Meebane. What's going on with Meebane? I mean, it seems like the, the talent is already always there, but this year he really made a jump. Right. It, it just what it's brought to my attention is just maturity. It seems like. Now, again, I, I've only known him for this short period of time. So, you know, what I've seen is he's a detailed guy. He's a guy that, you know, I think he used to be a guy that you always had to keep your thumb on and push him in the right direction. But sometimes guys, as they play, more years they play, it kind of it kind of triggers for them. And it feels like that with him. I think Giff uh, still keeps his thumb on him. But, uh, you know, he's just really taken ownership. I think a very prideful person. Well, I think we'll look at, we're always, you know, constantly we're talking about personnel placement. You know, who would be a better guy at this fit and how do we use the personnel that we have? And that's when, you know, the run was starting to affect us. We thought, all right, let's look at this and let's go into it with this idea. And, you know, he can do these things. And uh, I think those conversations are constant. So we'll look at Denzel when he comes back and say, all right, now, how do we place this, and you know who's playing where, and how do we, you know, keep making sure that we improve, but yes, best utilize our personnel. Uh, Desmond King is is really growing. I think the trust with our players is building on him. I think where he's, he needs to be and how he's supposed to do it, you're seeing it come more. Uh, I thought it was a phenomenal play, that jailbreak screen that he made. Uh, we were in man coverage, and that, that's a difficult call. I didn't put us in the best call right there. And he made a great play. So you're seeing flashes of plays like that. I think where he's come along, too, he's a pretty good open field tackler. You know, he, you know, that constantly shows up, too, where he's around the ball, and when he has his opportunity, does a pretty good job. So, you know, we just got to keep pushing him. He's got a lot to learn in a short period of time. I know we're a little bit, still a little time to get there, but obviously when you play again against Jacksonville, they're your former team that you were there, right. and you kind of set the foundation for the players that are really playing at a very high level. What are your emotions thinking about that, too? And it's kind of done the player deep right. Well, I, you know, to me, you're happy for them. You know, I mean, you, you can't not care for players that you were with for so many years. So to see them do well and play at a high level and uh, some get rewarded because of it, I think that's cool. Uh, you know, I'm all for that. So, uh, you know, but, I, you know, I, like I said, this team here, I'm really amazed by just how they go about it. And, um, you know, happy to see that, you know, in a lot of areas we're improving. Obviously, we've got some work to do. What's your approach when you go back there to a place, obviously, where you, you coach for, for four seasons and you'll know a lot of people and all right. that? Well, I don't know. I, I probably haven't thought much about it. Um, 
you know, I care for Seattle, you know, and I care for Jacksonville and Tampa and, you know, everywhere I've been. Um, there's just, I think the NFL, there's a lot, a lot of really good people in the NFL is what I've learned through the years that I've been at. Just really good people and people that all want the same thing. So at least where I've been, I've noticed that. So, um, you know, Jacksonville is just another place that had a lot of good people. <laughs> uh, I'm more focused on us, you know, what we have to do. I know that we're asked about Joey Bosa a lot, but the fact that he had the most sacks by any player for his first 20 games, I mean, is that kind of put in perspective just how that happened to start to his career? He really well, he's pretty special. You know, I don't look at the stats like that and say, okay, hey, let's, where is he at compared to everybody else? You know, my, our message to our players is just do your job. Do your techniques. You know, don't try to be Superman, but we do expect your best every play. And if you do that, those, those things will just take care of themselves. So it's more of that approach with our guys. And then just, just trust it. Th those things will happen. Sometimes when you try too hard or you press, you know, it doesn't work out the way you want it to. So keeping them more in that mindset, I think, is good. Is you about Joey once you started working with him every day? You know, watching from outside and then... There's a lot out. of things. <laughs> but you know what? Football-wise, he is... Um, He's just unique. Uh, you know, I mean, he is so structured and such a routine person. I mean, you know before the game he's going to be out there going through his routine, how he warms up, and I think that just places him in a good mindset. And it could be hey, a group of people over here and they're talking about something, but his routine is far more important than that. And he's just very structured, and he knows what he wants to become, how he wants to help this team, and he's very driven. I mean, he, he sees through a straw now. I mean, he knows exactly what he wants to get done and how to do it. And uh, tremendous as far as coachable. Tremendous. And just we can watch all the information. There was some talk about his athleticism coming in and if he had elite enough athleticism to be an edge rusher. What, what right, did you yeah. About? I, I, would, I could see that question where people would say that because of his size and his weight, you don't, that's not a typical Leo type player. They don't look like that. But uh, his athleticism is unbelievable now. I'm, I'm not seeing a guy his size, weight, and have the athleticism that he has. He is just it's very, very natural to him, uh, very natural. And things come fast. So if you, you know, he's teaching gifts, teaching new techniques or trying different things, he'll work at it, but he picks up on it. And then not only that, it becomes second nature. You know, one of the things we talk about a lot is run, run, reach, you know, to reach. And that's been really emphasized this year. And I know Joey, what, a game or two ago, he came back and, and he went for it and knocked it out of the quarterback's hand. He said, I didn't even think about it. It just, I just did it, you know. And I think that's what's unique about Joey is that, you know, you emphasize something and it becomes natural that fast for him. Thanks, guys. Okay. All right. Thank you.